Hello, it's John Broadwell, and I'm here to show you a new forthcoming product that I'm really excited about. This is a carrier board for the Serial Wombat 18AB chip that is going to be available fully assembled that will uh, allow the interface of a Serial Wombat 18AB chip via USB through a CH340 uh, USB to UART uh, converter. And so you'll be able to get this board it will come pre-assembled with the Serial Wombat chip already inserted, and it will be ready to run to plug directly into a PC or to plug into a Raspberry Pi's USB port. Uh, this is a little bit different than the Serial Wombat 18AB kit board. All of the pinouts are exactly the same in terms of the pins on the side, the 5 volt, the 3.3 volt, the ground. This board, though, is designed to be plugged into USB, and it has the 3.3 volt regulator already built in. It has all the necessary capacitors already pre-populated. And it does not have uh, a jumper up here for the address. And you'll notice that the address and reset through hole uh, resistors are gone. The through hole pull-ups, if you want to use the I2C bus, are still there. That's primarily with the idea that we'll have a future revision of the firmware that will allow uh, the Serial Wombat 18AB to act as a U, as a I squared C controller as opposed to uh, a peripheral, and that would allow you to connect other I squared C devices up to the Serial Wombat 18AB chip and control them through the UART. That'll be a future firmware update. Uh, on the back, you'll see that there is a zero ohm resistor that shorts address to ground. Uh, that will make this board entirely designed to be used via UART through the USB. Down here we've got an RTS pin that comes off of the CH340 and that allows a single digital I.O. that is directly driven by the PC, not by the Serial Wombat chip. I don't know why you'd want that exactly, but it seemed a shame not to make that available uh, since you can directly manipulate that from your serial port. Up at the top we've got the ground plus 3.3 clock and data. Again, with the idea that maybe you'd want to control some kind of I squared C device. This is the same as the port that used to be near the bottom on the other board, but uh, is now not. Some interesting things on this board. It comes pre-populated with the quick headers. Again, there's an anticipation that perhaps people want to be able to drive I squared C devices directly from their PC through this USB interface. So that'll be, uh, that'll be new. And I had the board space and the assembly cost and part cost was minimal. So I added four WS2812B uh, LEDs on here. These are RGB LEDs. They're powered by the five volt line directly from the USB and they tie into pin number 13 which is one of the pins that's uh, enhanced digital capable, but not one of the five volt uh, tolerant or otherwise fancy pins. So uh, that's on this board by default. Uh, so you'd want to take that into account if you were doing anything else with pin number 13, but generally it shouldn't be. On the back of this board, there is a uh, crystal, an eight megahertz crystal. Typically the Serial Wombat chip uses an internal oscillator, which has a one to two percent accuracy so that any time measurements you make can be off by one to two percent and that varies a little bit with temperature in this case you're talking about a few parts per million uh off so this should be capable of taking very very precise a side effect of that is that five, pins five and six will not be available as gpio so there will be two less available pins those are about the least capable pins so i don't see that as a big deal uh, I don't think a lot of people are maxing this chip out right now anyway, and I think the extra uh, accuracy on the timing will be worth that. So if you disagree with that, let me know, tell me in the comments, and we'll see. The other downside of that is that it will require a specific firmware that uh, enables that. That's not something, use of a crystal versus the internal oscillator is not something I can turn on and off at will in software. It has to be programmed that way from the start. So these chips will be uh, slightly different to take advantage of that crystal. Finally, up at the top, you'll see WP0 and WP19. These are touch pads that if you want to, you can configure WP0 or WP19 as 
uh, Serial Wombat 18AB capacitive touchpads and use these things like buttons. Those are mostly just designed for fun uh, if you want to experiment a little bit with the capacitive touch, but I had the space on the board, so I threw them on there. So what would you change about this particular board? What would you make different? What components would you add? You know, you see I've got some space maybe on the back here for some surface mount stuff. I thought about maybe throwing a diode and a FED on there so that, you know, you could maybe do a small load control or a relay or something like that, but didn't really see how to do it and still have a good pinout and do some things that made sense. So I mostly only kept, I mostly just kept it compatible with the prior board, with the exception of the addition of the WS2812 pins and the lack of the ability to set address. So my guess is that one of these is going to retail for probably $1,199, $1,299, and that will include the chip. This will be a one-pack. My, my cost to build these things in the small quantities that I'm making them is relatively high. So anyway, give me your thoughts. What do you think? What would you change about this board? What am I missing? Uh, really appreciate everybody's feedback, and I'll try to get anybody's changes built into a future version.